back on the dirt road. Oh. Well, that was fun. It was fun. I actually thoroughly enjoyed that. I've wanted to see that grave site for a long time. Sometimes when people tell you that there's a uh, that there's a cemetery off in the woods, it's not always true. Um, so to hear about it. And then when you said, told me you knew about it, then I knew there was one back there. And uh, I, I didn't think we'd be able to get back and see it anytime soon. I was afraid it had been destroyed. Yeah. Now look at all of these rocks yeah. through here. So we're taking a different path through the Rough Edge District than we've gone before. Um, and it's, uh, it goes over the mountain. The other way that goes over the mountain uh, no longer is accessible, but this takes us over Oak Mountain. One of my friends told me the other day that that area we went to up on the mountain, way up above the Terry Cemetery, you remember when we yeah. went up there and turned around? That that's called Turkey Knob. Oh, really? If I ever knew that, I'd have forgotten it. But I'm sure all these places back in here at some point had a, uh, a name. Yeah. going down there. Mm -hmm. I'd like someone's old farm or something. Dan, I think you'd said, and I don't remember if it was on the other video, but you'd said through here, you remember when there were actually houses standing back here? Yes, there were, st there were still some left uh, when I was coming up. Uh, of course, they were abandoned. And there was one or two that were just old tenant houses that were rented out to people to live in but there were a few elderly people that live back in here but you know I wonder now I don't recall ever seeing any power lines back in here no, I've never seen any power lines in here they had to have lived without electricity even up until the 1970s yeah I don't see any trace that this area was ever electrified not until we get on the other side of the mountain Now look at this, this gives a really, really good idea of how this area probably looked for the early settlers here and just the this vast expanses of rolling hills. And I would hate to know that I had to plant a tomato vine over there on the side of that hill, right. much less a cornfield or, or a cotton patch. And, and you know, one of the main crops here was sweet potatoes. Yeah. They did the best they could. Different farming methods than what we're accustomed to now. Right. That's the kind of sound I was talking about when I was in that deep cut yeah. and looking up at the pines and just that, just the whispering in the pines.
Oh, this is just, this is an incredible sight. You see the camera. This really is. This is an incredible sight through the windshield as we come up on the mountain. And we're gonna get out and look at something in just a minute, get a little bit of a closer look, but. And if the entire area of rough edge was clear cut, this is what you would see uh, all along these roads that we've been up and down the last week uh, is that that's the landscape. And that's what these early settlers had to settle on when they came here. Uh, they drew land and they got here thinking that they were gonna clear a spot for a farm. They were faced with that. Yeah. And they did the best they could carving a home out of the wilderness and, and farming that. Let's get out and take a closer look here. So this is something that I saw the other day I rode through here with uh, my buddy Scott. And cause you and I didn't come through Carlisle Gap. We didn't go over the mountain. And I saw this and wanted to come back and show it to you and also point it out on camera. Let's walk up here. Because as you were talking about farming this land, and that side of this mountain here is nothing but rock. That's all it is. There's rock and a little bit of dirt. <clears throat> but not enough to grow the kind of crops that it was needed to become wealthy back in those days. Uh, they just managed to make a living. That yeah. was it. I just, I cannot imagine coming through here and plowing and all of this and it gets worse the higher up the side of the mountain. So I would say I don't think that this has ever been a plowed field. No, this this couldn't have been. But let's pretend we're going to build a chimney. Right. <laughs> this is where they would have come to gather up the, the, the stones for those chimneys that are built all back in these hills. Uh, and we wonder why they use such small rock. Uh, children help gather those stones and they they gathered up what they could carry so if you think about the wagon would have been way down there and gathering up stones to load on that wagon and then take them to the home site and not everybody was an artist in uh, in the you know well learned in the art of building a chimney that that would draw properly uh, there were people that traveled around building chimneys for these settlers and you had to furnish the rock, they would furnish the labor and the expertise. But I believe it gets worse as we go up. Yeah, it does. But the one thing that you can see that this land is good for now, you can see how the pines are planted. The timber company comes in, they clear cut it, and they have a machine that comes right down through here and plants these rows of pine trees. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's amazing they can do it on the side of this hill. For sure. So I just thought that this was a real good example of how one thing that we've talked about on our, on our previous videos up here is how hard life would have been up here, how hard it would have been to cut out a living and uh, farming up here, how hard it is to walk down the side of this hill without falling. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's almost dead. And, and I thought this was just a perfect example of it right here. This is a good example of it. This may be too far gone, but what they would do is uh, they would let, they said one frost fall on the sagebrush and they would come out, of course, and they would, they would have something to cut it with. It. So this is, this is very brittle. But you'd gather up a big cluster of this and you would tie a string around and around and around that. Yeah. And then on the ends, you would take a fork and do that until you thinned out everything that would come loose. And then you might trim it off down here on the ends if there's some long pieces, but usually you would get them all the same length like that. And then you had a sagebrush broom and that's what people used to sweep their house with. I have some original sagebrush broom down in my shop that was given to me by a 90 year old lady probably 40 years ago. She still made these and she still swept her house with them. And she taught me how to make them. But this one is a little too far gone because it's brittle. But there's a certain time of year you go out just after the first frost and, and, and cut the sagebrush to make brooms. Another lost art. Ridgeway, that's unknown to me what to do. I just had a big rock outcropping, but all the small stuff, you know. 